Malcolm Turnbull's making his way home from America in time to find out who his new Deputy Prime Minister will be. Mr Turnbull's four-day trip to Washington ended at a gathering of state governors hosting Australian premiers, chief ministers and business leaders. The Prime Minister left convinced that the United States under Donald Trump will remain a committed Indo-Pacific power. Political editor Andrew Probin has been covering the visit in Washington, D.C. Beneath the star-spangled banner, Australia's business and political elite came face to face with America's. Please join in giving Prime Minister Turnbull a warm welcome. The Prime Minister brought a message of encouragement. America first does not mean America alone. Donald Trump's isolationist rhetoric may have lessened in the years since he became US President, But traditional allies such as Japan and Australia are sufficiently unnerved to seek assurances. American leadership in the world is in our interests, but it is in yours too. This is no ordinary gab fest. Inside are future presidential candidates, Democrat and Republican, making this a political speed dating opportunity not to be missed. And Malcolm Turnbull has urged governors, as he did with Donald Trump yesterday, not to let America diminish its presence in the Asia-Pacific. Our part of the Indo-Pacific region has enjoyed so much peace and prosperity for so long that there are some who forget that none of it would have been possible without the sheet anchor of American commitment and strategic power. I think there was one reference to China by name in the Prime Minister's speech, but the subtext here, deeper economic engagement with the United States, is a hedge. American presence in the region to hedge against Beijing's expansionism. Australia is among a dozen countries who believe the Trans-Pacific Partnership, a regional trade pact, would serve as a good foil to China. But the TPP, described by Donald Trump just yesterday as a... a very bad deal for the United States. ...has lost US support, a fact felt sorely. What President Trump has said is that possibly at some time in the future, you know, on different circumstances, America could consider rejoining it. I don't think that's going to happen any time soon. Although at least one senior Republican remains hopeful. When the moment comes, there'll be a great opportunity and you know, perhaps the United States will be back. But where America is, and where Malcolm Turmel would like Australia to follow, is cutting company tax. Most of the benefit flows through to wages. We've got to convince people that tax cuts flows through to the whole of the whole of the economy. Team Australia might have a clear view on tax cuts when abroad, but back home, its future is as foggy as ever. Andrew Proben, ABC News, Washington. Well, the Prime Minister's due to get back to Canberra in the morning, just before the Nationals elect their leader. National Affairs Correspondent Greg Jennett is at Parliament House. Greg, the field appears to be narrowing. Who's likely to become the next Deputy Prime Minister? As we speak, Jess, it looks as though the 53-year-old Veterans Affairs Minister Michael McCormack will probably do it in a cakewalk, and that's largely because the only other declared candidate, David Gillespie, also of New South Wales, withdrew this afternoon, recognising that he just couldn't muster the numbers among his 20 colleagues. And that decision by David Gillespie is roughly in keeping with a bit of a Nationals tradition to avoid contests for the leadership where possible. Their acting leader, Bridget McKenzie, had said as much on the ABC's Insiders program earlier today, and it looks as the days progressed as though their desire to avoid a wrenching contest for the leadership might just be achieved. We're looking for a really seamless and successful transition to the new leadership team with swearing in happening as soon as possible. So minimal change, uh, no renegotiation of the Cabinet of the, sorry, of the coalition agreement and ministerial portfolio arrangements. Well, the Nationals are looking for a smooth transition, but what are the chances, Greg, of a ballot tomorrow morning? Of course, in politics, nothing can be completely discounted in these situations. 
Jess, because the phones are still ringing hot. But we do know that Queenslander David Littleproud is being strongly encouraged to make a late run. That encouragement is coming from a group we could broadly describe as former Barnaby Joyce loyalists. Now, if David Littleproud was to make that decision, he'd be forcing the first leadership ballot contest for the Nationals in 18 years. But as we understand it, he wants to keep his cards close to his chest. Any intention he may have, David Littleproud may not actually declare until he gets in the party room meeting. And that, Jess, is due to begin here at 8 o'clock Canberra time tomorrow morning. Thanks. Greg Jennett in Canberra.